speed up a little bit. Anchor, ride the bevel, and cut. emergency shutoff. I don't know if I can't quite bring it up where you can see it, but it's uh, the shop made one. I mounted it's just below the, it's down here, mounted on the side of the lathe. And I want to practice using that thing, uh, turning it on and off. So when I need it in an emergency, I'll feel comfortable with it. Just having it is one thing, being comfortable with it is, is something something different. Okay. Now, because a lot of the hollowing is right here at the bottom, I'm going to shift to it and with a 45 degree bevel. I lose the bevel coming in here. I'm going to go with a flatter grind. I've got a, a bottom feeder that's got closer to a 60 degree grind that I can come in here and, and dig a little deeper. hollowing you got to clear out the, the debris a little bit so it doesn't hang up. Now my wall is pretty thick so I, I need to start working on this wall. Uh, that's going to be a challenge. I'm going to use a smaller bowl gouge and come down the side. Okay, right. And this is a 3 8 inch uh, with a fairly swept back uh, grind. So. We'll try that. is 14 inches. The problem is I'm working out here on the very end. Uh, I'm going to switch tool rests. And I'm going to use a, one I got from Lyle Jameson that's a little bit shorter, 9 inches, and it's also got a uh, threaded post where I can dial it in. That's especially useful for, for hollowing with getting your hollowing, hollowing tools right on, on center. Feel that my digital calipers, not too bad. This is going to be fairly thick. It's going to be a potpourri bowl, so it doesn't have to be real thin. Trying to take a light cut, so I'm going to tool rest this small tool. This emergency switch is I don't have to reach, reach across if I get in trouble uh, across the line of fire here to shut the lathe off. That's a good thing. Okay, I think I'm going to switch to some uh, hollowing tools. So I'm going to start with this uh, John Jordan, uh, I think it's a half inch, 
And uh, I got a little magnet here to help show me the orientation. You can see that. Uh, this is a little less aggressive if I, if, if I tilt it this way. We're just going to thin the wall just a little bit, but we've got to move the tool rest back. I'm just going to bring it back like this. I have to support the tool behind this hook, otherwise it's going to spin on me. So This is where dialing this in really, really helps. That looks like it's right about on center. So I'm going to start here and start thinning it. And just all it out. Using my left hand, bunch a little bit. And I've got to be careful backing out of here not to snatch that cutter on the rim of the bowl. Find my, go find my magnet here so I can again check the orientation. But in this case, I have a set screw. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, you can see that set screw. Um, so I'm going to pick up the cut here. And I'm going to set the depth. To right there. And that's as deep as I need to be. Okay. part about this type of form is not getting the, the uh, inside bigger than the outside. Now there's a little bit of a nub at the bottom and the trick to that is you got to get exactly on there and you just pivot it sideways down and up and across, down and up and across to get rid of that nub. And you got to do it very carefully because it's not miles per hour it's so small the center it's not going very fast. The trick is finding that center. I'm easing it in. Trying to find where that nub is. There's that nub. There it is. Down, up, and across. Down, up, and across. Down, up, and across. You know I'm going to tell you it's. Yeah, I got rid of it because you're not going to be able to see it. I think I'm ready to sand it and and it'll be done. There we go. So I'm going to do some sanding and uh, show you what it looks like. Just before I get to sanding, I think maybe I'll show you my sanding uh, setup. I'm using a um, an angle drill. This is an inexpensive one from from Harbor Freight uh, with a keyless uh, chuck. I've had it for a number of years. The air intake is down near the bottom so it doesn't doesn't suck up too much air into the gears. Uh, I've made these uh, mandrels, threaded uh, uh, screws and and nuts and, and the way it fastens on here is I've got one screwed in here but I use a thread, a all thread coupler in here so then I can just thread these on and off and I have a separate mandrel for each one so I don't have to keep keep worrying about because I got Velcro tearing up the Velcro. So we're going to sand the outside, turn on my dust collection. Slow the 
the speed down a little bit. And then keep the end of my body and do the Turner dance. Okay, back to the drawing board when I showed this to my my spouse she says the mouth is too small and indeed it I made it smaller than the one I was uh, mentally picturing that I'd done a while back so we're going to eliminate this first bead here uh, because we're going to put potpourri in it so it needs to be big enough and that that would make it easier to hollow if we'd start off with a bigger bigger mouth we could have probably done it all with bowl gouge and, and scraper without going to hollowing tools so let me take a bowl gouge and quickly fix that I'm using a little tiny uh, 3 8 inch uh, bowl gouge. there we have it a design change uh, and that I think my wife will be much happier that with that larger op opening uh, and all I've got to do is sand it a little bit more let it let it dry for a few days and then put some antique oil oil uh, finish on it uh, actually I've got to show you uh, after I finish sanding I'll show you reversing it and doing the bottom okay I brought up the tailstock now we're going to use a vacuum chuck you know, this is a luxury. You don't have to use this. There's other ways to do it. And it's got a piece of fun foam. I'm going to use a cone live center just because it's available. Bring that up. Now I'm going to, to mount this into the uh, headstock. The line to my vacuum pump, turn it on, and because of the, this is so porous, I'm not getting nearly as good a vacuum as I could. Um, but there's a way I can, I can fix that. Since this is the only area I'm going to be dealing with, I'm just going to, uh, to use a little shrink wrap here. Well, let's put it on the right direction. Let's put it on this way. Definitely change the vacuum. And it gives me a little extra security and seals this area and seals this area. And the vacuum jumps from about 15 pounds to about 25 pounds by doing that. And we can see it uh, pulling the moisture out. Again, keep the tailstock up as long as possible. I'm going to use a small bolt gouge to uh, cut this away. I don't like to go above about 800 on the uh, vacuum chuck.
make sure the bottom is slightly concave so it won't rock. That looks good. Got one little ridge to take care of here that we'll set before we sand. As long as all the pressure is going right into the chuck, this holds very well. good and there we have our potpourri bowl minus the, the finish still got a little drying to get a little dampness there and here gotta put my name on it but I'm pleased with it hey if you like this uh, project please subscribe if you if you want to help me out share it with other other wood turners see you next time